So I get a call a couple days ago to come to Chicago. Come drive a 530E. And then this morning they present me with not one, but two telephones and an Apple Watch. Okay. What is going on behind all of this stuff? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you have seen uh, part of the digital transformation the company's going yeah. through. Uh, so BMW in that, uh, in that respect. But also, I mean, uh, the digital transformation our products are going through, um, the car. Um, I mean, in the past, everything was about engines, uh, the right wheels, and all of that. As it should be. Yeah. Freude am Fahren. Right. But um, new consumer studies we are doing in order to validate our offerings really show that um, if you uh, don't have the right digital offerings um, connected to your car or within the car, um, you are going to have a problem to stay competitive uh, because digital is becoming more and more purchase criteria for many people. So let's step back. You guys were one of the first to do digital, but this is back in the stone age right. of, remember iPod your car? Right. You were the first ones to do that. BMW has quite some history. I think it uh, dates back till the early years of 2000 um, with our connected drive offering. Um, we're basically an automotive company has invested into digital. Um, but not being a real digital company. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was just making iPods work or, or tr tricking the in, car into thinking it was a 6 right. to CD and, and changer. Everybody thought uh, you need to have apps in the car. Yeah. The benefit we are today um, leveraging is that we have an installed base of 8.5 million uh, cars with connectivity, so where we can build on basically. Where does that go back to? How, how old is 18.5 million? How old, how, what year car was that? I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, four or five years old. Okay. And what you have seen today, the, the um, connected experiences platform, I mean, we are basically going back um, to the year 2014. So cars with 2014 head units are addressable with that one. So you can update them? Through the uh, mobile experience, basically, mm. you have a means in order to get into the car and the head units in the car, the compute mm. systems there, are able to, to work with that. Okay. Obviously, experiences in the new 5 Series you have seen today, where you have your personal start screen, mm. personalized, uh, where you have basically seamless uh, connectivity when you get into. Uh, the user experience is different than in a four-year-old car, but that's normal. Let's step back. Yeah. You, you and I just met. And I'm like, it's just two car guys talking about a car, and you told me you're not a car guy. So let's go oh. back into your history. <laughs> right. Where'd you come from before BMW? So I, I'm just learning to be a car guy, uh, and it's pretty interesting because uh, I'm coming from technology companies, uh, from a background point of view, whether it's um, Motorola, IBM, um, or uh, semiconductors, it's opinion. And then uh, the last eight years I was with Nokia, which was pretty revealing because, I mean, we tried to build up a services business there, and you had the huge scale, not on the smartphone side, but on the feature phone side still. Um, so, and then I basically um, um, moved to the car industry, which is pretty different. <laughs> so did BMW come up to you and say, we're trying to do this thing of bringing apps in our cars, or did you go to them? The two board, me board members who hired me, they basically had the vision that we need to literally transform the company. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, that was three years back already, so we were pretty early on. Plus, um, that, um, it's not only the company and the processes, but it's also about the product itself. And uh, initially I had total freedom. I was basically a one-man show before building up that organization. And um, it was about, yeah, you need to do big data or you need to sell apps. And uh, we were looking at where's the biggest lever for, for mm. BMW. And it's not about selling apps in a 90 billion company, you know. So uh, we were looking at uh, a totally new approach, how to do digital. And um, the legacy we built on is basically the connected drive uh, offering, which is vehicle centric. So you don't learn with the consumer what he's doing. There is no consumer profile behind it. Um, it's not uh, dynamic, adjustable. You are so it's not about selling services, it's not about no, data mining. No, it's, it's basically, uh, digital was treated like a normal product. You launch something and that's, that's it. And for me, basically work begins when the car leaves the factory uh, and, and then normally the product is ready, but for me it starts work because it's an ongoing process. You learn with the consumer, you see interaction, usage, you improve things, and you continuously invest in the product. And um, that's what we try to bring uh, to the company. And uh, we, we basically move from this vehicle-centric approach to a pure consumer-centric approach, which means also what you're used to in the smartphone world. You're always taking your personal profile with you. It gets bigger and bigger and you learn. Uh, so why can't you adopt that in the in, in in the car industry when you go to a new BMW? 
he knows you and it, the car Im immediately adapts to your needs you mm. know so that consumer centric approach was basically the reason why we have built um, the connected experience platform so take me back to that original meeting you guys are sitting in a, in a conference room what was the what was like the why of doing all this what was the understanding like were there people coming into the meeting saying we're a car company how does this help us sell cars yeah i mean so we were basically discussing uh, how we could um, contribute from a value perspective most to BMW and uh, it was not by selling car data or it was not by building apps. Uh, we thought, I mean, we really need to focus on the customer interface because that's what the car companies today don't have under their control. And we have at the same time when, the co when a customer is driving, captive time with the customer, which is pretty unique. And that's why CE companies like Google or Apple want to get into the car. Um, so but we, they're already there, wouldn't you argue that? They are you there with a the smartphone, but Yeah, but you're still. the first one that did it actually. Yeah, but, but we had, we had been, then thought, okay, in order to, um, what do we need in order to make that link between the customer and the car? And so we came up with building a cloud-based platform where you have a few components in which allows us basically to, on one side, include our own services, include easily third-party services, and place those services out to the customers on multiple touch points. Because up to now, car companies thought, okay, I bring something to the car, but customer journeys start before the car, uh, before the car uh, basically um, is on the street, and they end outside of the car as well. So that's why we included multiple touch points. We have a capability to add touch points whenever it, something new is coming up, like mm -hmm. Amazon Echo, all the smartwatches, we can include smart, uh, mobile phones, but we're differentiating in the in-car experience, obviously. And that, that nucleus, that brain, what we have built, that platform, is basically all centered around your personal profile, which you always take with you, mm. and which is intelligent through machine learning capabilities or artificial intelligence, which means we learn with you your mobility patterns, and we make all these hardware adjustments, etc., while you're driving basically redundant over time and give you a totally new car experience. And we thought that is really the, the biggest lever for us in order to keep our products competitive longer term because we can always keep them fresh over lifetime. Mm. We can always put new experiences into the car. Uh, we can monetize our business in a different way. Instead of only monetizing when you buy a car, you can monetize over the whole customer life cycle because we learn with the customer what he wants. We have a portfolio of experiences with that one which are sticky, which are used because they are personalized, they are contextual. So that begs the question, is it about selling services? Is it about en enhancing customer loyalty? Or is it about offering more products to make the car, like someone decide a BMW over it's an Audi? A, it's a mixture of, of a few things. Uh, as I said, I mean, the first thing is you need to make your car competitive. If it becomes, digital becomes a real purchase criteria, mm -hmm. you, you need to be sure that you are competitive in that space. And um, through digital in the car, as said, I mean, you can keep your car much longer competitive because you can update it over life cycle. Mm. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we want to have direct access to our customers. So let's, let's not drive past that. Yeah. You, so you do want to build an upgrade path in existing vehicles. It, it, yeah, it's, it's like we're doing today already through our cloud platform. We can basically, like uh, what has been announced, announced with Plus, uh, Connected Plus, we can all the time add new features and functionalities in order to surprise the customer in a positive way that he gets more stuff over life cycle. Mm -hmm. That's about the product. The second thing is, if you build a successful digital product, it obviously drives usage and engagement with the customer, which goes back to your question about loyalization. And, and our premium customer base, I think, is pretty valuable. And, and we try to drive traffic, um, stickiness, and that hopefully will drive loyalization up in order to reduce churn to other brands. Okay. Because you have a, a lock-in situation that your profile has developed over years with BMW. You are buying a new BMW, you always feel immediately at home. It's a little bit like the Apple phenomenon. Um, that, that's the business model. Best combination of hardware, product, and services. And the, the last uh, element I think which is important is we see an additional business opportunity there because we suddenly can on one, one hand monetize over life cycle. We have an e-commerce store capability mm. in the car and can basically also contextually and per, in a personalized way sell additional products and services to the customer. Have you guys done, looked across the ocean and said, look what General Motors has done with OnStar or other companies have done with these types of services and see the penetration they've gotten? Uh, no, honestly not. 
because okay. um, I think the, the benchmark in that respect are not other car companies. A little feedback for you, they're wildly profitable. The OnStar business in General Motors is, it makes more money than some of the brands. Yeah, might be true, yeah. Um, but as I said, we have uh, three other, we have three targets we want to achieve. The first one is a profitable business, and I think um, we are in a good path to do that. Um, yeah. Uh, but the second thing is we really want to drive it as an internet uh, services business, which means rapid innovation cycles, drive product differentiation and build a customer base.